Hi and welcome to another ESM training video. In this clip I'd like to introduce you to TRIOS. TRIOS is Three Shapes Interaural Scanner and it's available in two forms. We've got TRIOS Pod which is what we're looking at here and we have TRIOS Cart which is a you may have seen on websites and, and various brochures and so on. It's a standalone unit with a touchscreen monitor and PC built into the unit. This TRIOS Pod is a lot more portable. This is it. Pod, scanner and laptop. They all work together or a PC. We can connect it through, through to a PC. So it's quite portable um, maneuverable around within the office or within a clinic or surgery or if you move from one location to another you're, you, you can do so with ease. Um, so the, the main components of course are the scanner itself. Um, we call this the scanner or sometimes we refer to it as the wand and the base unit is referred to as the pod. The scanner sits in the pod using this hole. The hole's at an angle and it's very important that we just, it's just something simple but can be overlooked as well. The hole is at an angle. That means that the scanner can only go in in one orientation. If we try to put it in a different orientation, there is a strong risk that the scanner could fall. Simple consideration. We just make sure when we're positioning the, the pod in our work area that it's positioned in such an orientation that we can easily take the scanner out and put it back in again. Take it out, put it back in again. Okay, we've got a couple of cables going on here. We've got a cable joining the scanner to the pod. The cable is long enough such that it gives us plenty of reach um, between the pod and, and our work area where we actually, where the patient is, where we're going to do the scanning from, but also it's it's short enough such that it's not dangling along the ground. Um, people have often asked us about, well, can we have a, a wireless version? Will a wireless version become available? There's a couple of reasons why there's not. The most significant reason is, of course, that the level of data being generated here, the amount of data, the speed at which the data is being generated is phenomenally large. It's not possible to transfer that data at an acceptable rate across a wireless um, connection. So it's important that it, it's fed through a, a wire. Uh, another simple consideration as well is, however, um, with, a, with a cable, we've got a leash. It's like a dog on a leash. Um, th if there was no connect physical connection to the scanner, well then it's going to be easy for this scanner to go walking. Nobody wants that to happen. So it's always physically connected to to the pod. Another consideration as well in relation to wireless networks or wireless connections or Bluetooth connections. How many times we've been using the system and the, and the connection drops, even if it's just for a split second, it drops. And we don't want that happening in the middle of a scan. We don't want to run the risk of losing any information whilst we're scanning. So with a strong, reliable, fast, con wired connection, we're going to be guaranteed the highest level of, of performance as possible. Two other connections going through the scanner are a, a it's an RJ45 connection here. This is, it's RJ45, it's an Ethernet cable, it's a typical network cable, it is shielded, particularly for this application, but it goes through to a USB converter, and the USB cable then goes into the uh, PC. So whilst this is a convenient cable to use, this Ethernet cable, it's not possible to drive the, the scanner through a, a usual network configuration. We cannot plug this into a network switch, for example. Um, to do so, well, number one, it inv invalidates the uh, the warranty. But if you start pushing power into this when it shouldn't be coming into this, um, you're, you're going to have some um, issues as well. So, golden rule: yes, it's an Ethernet cable. Do not connect it to any network components. Um, and finally, the black cable is a, a power supply cable. So it's 220 volt or, or 110 volt, depending where in the world you are. Uh, typical AC supply comes into the transformer and then that's automatically adjusted to an appropriate voltage and brought into the brought into the pod. So going back to the scanner itself we've got three different scan tips that we can work with each having a different application. The scan tip that's currently on the on, on the scanner is simply a protective tip. It slides off it is purely a plastic covering to protect the tube. So we refer to this part of the scanner as being the scan tube. At the end of the scan tube there's a highly polished glass lens there and obviously it's an optical device 
we need to protect that lens. We need to protect it, make sure it's taken well, good care of, make sure it's clean, and make sure it remains undamaged. This is its job to make sure that that tip is that, that the the optics are are well protected when the scanner is not in use. When the scanner is in use, when we are scanning patients, we're going to use a tip like this. So you you are provided with several of these tips. They are consumable. Um, they are autoclavable. This is the component that goes in the patient's mouth. So as a result, it needs to meet the, the highest degree, highest level of um, of cleanliness and uh, and cross infection control. So the tip can be autoclaved, um, and it's recommended that it is autoclaved. What the tip is comprises of is a metal strip inside there, which you can just about see, and a reflector. The purpose of the metal strip is to conduct heat from a heating element built into the tube. So it conducts heat from the heating element through that metal strip onto the reflector. And why is that? course to minimize fogging. If we put a reflector into a patient's mouth and it's it's at a, at a cooler temperature, well then we're going to get misting and fogging of the of the reflector when it's in the patient's mouth. So typically just, just prior to scanning we give 30 to 60 seconds. We put the tip on for 30 to 60 seconds and that just bring, gives us enough time for the reflector to come up to temperature to minimize the uh, the impact or, or the effect of any um, misting or, or fogging. As I said, the tip is autoclavable and it can be orientated pointing downwards or pointing upwards, depending on which arch we're scanning. So typically, patients facing us will have the tip in this orientation when we're scanning the lower arch and this orientation when we're scanning the upper arch. You will notice that the tips are quite tight on the, on the tube. And the reason being because of that metal strip. That metal strip that's in there, you know, it's slightly curved, it's slightly bulging out. And the reason for that is such that it makes good thermal contact with the tube in order for the heat to pass through onto the uh, reflector. The ter third tip that we will consider is the calibration tip. And its job is to make sure that the scanner is working the way it should do. So again, during a scanning process, uh, sorry, calibration process, we tell the software that we're going to calibrate, and it's quite simple. We go to the configure option on the main screen on the left hand side, we hit configure. We've now got a series of sub options. We click on scan, and then we've got an option here for calibrate scanner. And when we click on calibrate scanner, we're given this message, please mount the calibration tip on the scanner and press next. Make sure the tip is free of hair and the dust inside. And then we click next and the scanner goes through a calibration process. I'm not going to I'm not going to run through that right now, as we just did one earlier on today. So when do we calibrate? We're going to calibrate once a week. So typically on a Monday morning, just at the start of the week, good practice, we're going to calibrate. Or if there's any significant temperature fluctuations. So with that in mind, it might actually be a good idea to wait until maybe 10 or 11 a.m. on a Monday morning, if particularly if the office, if the temperature within the office is prone to fluctuation. We want to make sure that the scanner and this calibration tip are at uh, the ambient temperature um, before calibrating. Uh, so typically once a week, if there has been any significant temperature fluctuations, then we're going to do it. We're going to calibrate and any time the scanner is moved. Now I don't mean the scanner being moved from here to here or from one room to another room within the within the office or within the surgery. Um, what I'm talking about here is if it's moved from one office to another office. So if it's going into the back of a car, into the trunk of your car, um, and it's moving around, when we take it out, first thing we should do is calibrate. It takes two or three minutes, it's not a big deal, and it's, um, it's strongly recommended. As the message said, it's important to make sure that the inside of the scan tube is nice and clean. There's a little white glass um, component in at the bottom there. We just want to make sure that that's nice and clean. And similarly, the optic here. We want to make sure that that is uh, nice and clean as well. We can wipe it down with typical uh, disinfecting products that we would use within the, the within the clinic, and maybe give it a, a, a wipe with some dry, soft tissue. And of course, with if the tissue, just make sure that there's no dust um, left as as a result. When we're scanning, it's important from two perspectives that the uh, the tips are clean, clean 
as in sterilized, disinfected, clean, but also that there's no smudging or there's no um, hairs or, or, or anything on the, on the optics. If the reflector or if the optics is dirty, it's going to have an impact on, on the scan process. And then I think finally, what we got to consider is the scanner itself. You know, it's going to be, whilst the scanner isn't going to be going into the patient's mouth, we do need to make sure it, it will experience saliva. You know, it's, it's going to be, um, it needs to be maintained and cleaned um, appropriately. So um, the, the whole scanner unit and the pod, these can all be wiped down with typical um, cleansing products. So, you know, after, in between every use, we're going to make sure that we um, keep the highest degree of, of cross-infection control measures in place. Um, uh, after that, what have we got? We got the push button. Sure, push button. The only interface on the scanner with the outside world. This is our control. We push it once to start scanning. We push it again to stop scanning. We don't have to hold it down. We just give it a quick push to start and stop. That's a little introduction to Trios. We're not using it now, so I'm going to put the protective tip back in place and that tip is going to be sent off for sterilization. So I hope it was useful. A little introduction into Trios, how it works, um, some of the physical features of it and of course we've got plenty of other clips to show you in relation to actually using it and getting the best results out of it.